Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to show you how to make this ultra glass effect. So there are a couple of surprising tricks in here that I think you're going to find interesting. Let's take a look. So for this project, let's go with 3840 by 2160. Let's go with 24 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. First of all, I'm just going to bring in this background that I've made for you. Come to the Assets folder, mountains.png. I'll give you a link in the description. So let's just call this group BG for background. Let's right click here and make a new group. And let's call this text source. Let's grab our text tool and type out our text. So I'm using this font called Phosphate. I'm going to make it nice and big and reduce the line spacing and center align it. Properties, re reset. And then let's just adjust that baseline a bit. So we're centered up more or less. So then what I want to do is I want to make a clone of this text source group. So right click and make clone layer. Let's turn off the text source group and actually let's put it right at the back there. So into this clone group, I'm going to add library generators color solid. I'm going to move that to the back of that group. And what I want to do here is let's come to the HSB sliders. Let's have a zero saturation and 75% brightness. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clone layer and I'm going to add filters, blur and Gaussian blur. And I'm going to set the amount to something like 80. And I'm going to call this group contour. Let's come back down to our text source group and let's make another clone of the text source group. So right click, make clone layer. And this has made a new group. Let's bring that out to the top. And let's call this main text. So let's add some filters to this. Let's first of all, turn off that contour. So to this group, which will make fixed resolution, we're going to add, first of all, a stylize and indent. And we're going to use our contour group as the height map. Now, a couple of things I forgot to do with the contour group. I should have set it to fixed resolution. I should have also set that blur to crop. Okay, let's come back to our indent and set that up properly. We're going to go with 0.45 for the softness, zero for the brightness, 0.36 for the ambient, 38 for the highlight brightness, 20 for the highlight sharpness. Let's just set that light rotation to something like 130 while we get going. And I'm going to set my depth to five. The next thing I want to do is add a stroke. So filters, border and stroke. So we want white for the color. We want a width of one and we want the position to be centered. Then I'm going to add an extrude. So filters, stylize and extrude. Where are we there? I want to set the angle to 270, the distance to 20. For the back size, I'm going to have 0.97. For the face brightness, 0.85. For the front brightness, 0.4. And for the back brightness, 0.7. The next step is going to be the interesting one. So we're going to add filters, color, and gradient colorize. Let's open up the gradient here. Let's select this black tag and set its location to 70%. Let's click to make a new tag in the middle there and set its location to 20%. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set the color very precisely to 0.5 for red, 0 for green and 0.5 for blue. So this is looking very odd, but what we're going to do next is we're going to make a new group and we're going to drop the main text into that group and let's call this group glass. And to this group, which we'll also set to fixed resolution, we're going to add filters, color, and a channel mixer. Come down here to the alpha output. We're going to set the alpha alpha to zero, and we're going to set the alpha red to 0.75, and the alpha blue to one. 
And you can see now we've got the beginnings of this glassy look. However, of course, we've got a kind of pinkiness from that gradient colorize. And let's just neutralize that by coming to color and uh, hue saturation. And let's just take out all the saturation. Then let's add back in some color. Let's come to filters and color and let's use another gradient colorize. Let's open up the gradient. Let's make a couple of tags here. Let's set this one here on the right to 70% and this one here on the left to 30%. So for this darker one here, I want to make it a nice deep blue. And for this one, I'm going to go with a little bit of yellow. So just push a little bit of yellow in there, not very much, just to kind of give us a little bit of a sort of sunny feel. And you can see the difference that's made, just a little bit more interesting like that. Then, because I don't want to make the glass too uniform, I'm going to make a new group inside here. So object new group, and I'm going to call this speckles. And into this group, I'm going to add object generators, and we're going to look for noise. We're going to set the blend mode of this group to overlay and the opacity to 50%. And we're going to add an image mask to the group and we're going to use our original text source group as the mask source. And what this is going to do is just give us a little bit of texture in there. You can see the difference that makes. And, you know, we can play with this value to taste. You know, we can dial it maybe back to 40% if we think that's too strong. So let's tidy things up a little bit, close down some of these groups, main text contour and so on. Uh, let's close everything down like that. So what I want to do is I want to drop the contour into the glass group and also the text source because when we animate this those need to be animated with this glass group and then i'm going to make a new group i'm going to call this all well it's going to be almost everything and i'm going to take my glass group and i'm going to drop it into there so my glass group needs to be fixed resolution we did already done that and this group here also needs to be fixed resolution so to animate our glass, to give it a bit, a bit of a zoom, what we're going to do is select this glass group, and we're going to come to Properties and Scale, Add Parameter Behavior, Ramp, and let's have a start value of negative 15. And then that's going to look like this. So you can see it's flicking around all over the place, and that's because we need to switch the quality to best. And that's going to sort it out nice and calm now. The next thing we want to do, and the, really the main thing here, is to create some refraction. At the moment, we're seeing directly through the glass, or rather, we're seeing directly through, and that means it's not actually looking like glass, because as you know, glass has some really nice refraction that bends the light. So how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to make a clone of this all group. So right-click, make a clone there. That's making a new group at the top there, which we're going to call Displace. We are going to make this group fixed resolution. We're going to select the clone and we're going to come to filters and color and threshold. We can leave that at the defaults. Filters, color and negative, and then filters, blur and Gaussian blur. And let's have an amount of 32 and remember to turn on crop. So we can close down the displace group and turn it off. And then we can come back into our background group and select our mountains. And we can come to filters, distortion and bump map. We can use that displace as the map image like so. And then we're going to set the direction to negative 30 and the amount to negative 1. And you can see now that we're getting this really nice displacement. You can see it particularly down here on the S's. It's really much more glass-like because we're not seeing directly through to the background. So another little detail that I want to do is come back into the main text and the indent. Let's set that light rotation to 0. And then let's add a ramp behavior to it. So let's have a start value of, say, 80 and an end value of 200. And what that's going to do is just give us this really nice, gentle rotation of the light. Really going to add to that shiny effect. And what we can also do is select our all group and we can come to filters and glow and glint. And we can reduce the exposure down to zero. Let's have two streaks, 
And I think that colour fringing, I, don't, I usually don't like it, but if we turn it off, it does actually add sort of a prismatic look to it. So let's stick with that. And let's just dial this mix value down to something like 40. And this is just going to give us a bit more of a kind of glare off those highlights. And I think that's looking pretty good. So anyway, that's the effect. I hope you have fun with it. Thanks very much indeed for watching. And I'll see you again soon. <laughs>